Hi, how are you? I'm Stephanie Berry. I'm here to talk to you today about Kelly Wurstler. Oh, I will share my screen. And we will get started. I was first introduced by Kelly Wurstler by staying at one of her hotels in Santa Monica, a, vi a Viceroy Hotel. And that's what inspired me to, do, to research her for this project. The interiors were just so striking and different and nothing that I'd ever seen before. Um, so just to start, she was born in 1967 in Myrtle Beach. Her, her dad was an engineer, but her mom was an antiques dealer and also an interior designer. And this has really influenced her. Um, her mom would take her and her sister to different flea markets and auction houses. And um, you can see that this still influences her style today. It was on these trips that she would pick up little trinkets and make um, different crafts, try to sell them at pop-up shops. So she was an entrepreneur way back when. But her house, she talks about, was always in a state of metamorphosis. So her, she would come home from school, the different rooms would be diff painted different colors, furniture would be moved around. And so this inspired her to pursue a career in interior design. Her family spent a great deal of time on the Northeast. And so she applied to the Massachusetts College of Art in Boston and graduated with a degree in graphic design and interior design. And you can see how the graphics really influences her style today. After graduating, she had a couple internships in Boston and New York. But her career really started when she moved to LA in her mid twenties to pursue a career in the film industry as a set designer. And she had a couple jobs, but ultimately decided that it wasn't for her. She wanted to work on real life instead of a contrived set. Uh, it was during this time she was a hostess in a restaurant and she was approached to pose in Playboy, which I thought was kind of an interesting aside. She, the relationship was pretty fleeting, but the money that she made through that job helped her start her firm um, in 1995. And her firm, a year later, she was introduced to a man named Brad Corzin, who was a real estate developer. And this was a really pivotal time in her career. He hired her to design his own residence, but also other properties, including the Avalon Hotel. The Avalon opened in 1999 with a style called a playful take on mid-century modernism. And it was this work as well as her work for Maison 40 Hotel that really launched her career. Um, her work at the Viceroy Hotels in Palm Springs has been said to be one of her most accomplished. But um, she and Corzin were married in 2002. So not only was that um, a fateful meeting professionally, but also personally. Here are some examples of the Viceroy on the right, the one that I stayed at in Santa Monica. And you can see how interesting it is with the mirrors behind the check-in counter here the, and the large portrait. And then on the top with the, the library room, the, the um, bookshelves are diagonal instead of um, straight. And then on the left is the Avalon Hotel, the first one that she was recognized for. And you can see the placeful use of color as well as the graphics playing into her design. So her playful, elegantly over-the-top designs for Avalon changed the look of boutique hotels around the world, said New York Times, just demonstrating her impact on the industry. She continued to do work for Viceroy ho Hotels in this country and beyond. But you can see on the right, she also did some work for the Four Seasons in Anguilla. And uh, this one is a really nice example of bringing all these organic features together, but also sourcing textiles from around the world. So she has a really eclectic style where she's mixing uh, periods and styles and color um, that makes it really unique. Her work within the hotel industry built her reputation as the presiding dame of um, grand dame of the West Coast interior design. So she's had quite a bit of influence, but her work also extends beyond hospitality. And she did a key project for Bergdorf Goodwin at their flagship store in New York City on the right that also helped move beyond hospitality. Um, she's done a lot of work for residents, uh, residential um, homes as well for some of the stars in LA. So 
Gwen Stefani, Cameron Diaz, Ben Stiller are just some examples. Her differentiator is really the elegance of the unexpected. So clients come to her for the unconventional. And you can see in her office there on the right that she loves color. Um, she talks about her philosophy being love color, take risks and stay curious. And I thought the quote by her on the bottom here was kind of interesting that her job is to be a good listener and run the client's vision through her filter, start by asking them what story they wanna tell and how they wanna feel. It's about telling a story and evoking a mood. Um, so then when you dig a little bit deeper into her process, she has now has 50 people on staff that are all cross-disciplinary that um, she likes because she feels like uh, all these different points of view create a better end product. But she talks about her process being more intuitive than intellectual. That being said, she still has stages that she goes through. So you can see here, the, there's an initial concept phase, a schematic design phase where they develop different pictorial representations of different possible ways that they can um, go in terms of the space and the client decides which one they like the best. Um, then there's the design development phase with further renderings and sourcings of fabrics and furnitures and fix fixtures. But then in the implementation phase, that's where a lot of legwork happens, where you're visiting the site. And then uh, in her situation, she also finds a lot of one of the kind items. So she's not buying all the furnishings um, and accessories at like a design mart. She's really looking for some of those unique items that she has to do a lot of legwork for. So Wurstler encapsulated sophistication and wit with a nod to the past and a wink at the future. The mix is altogether her own and tailored to every job. I thought that was a nice way to sum up her style um, and her brand, as you can imagine, has really extended and has become much more of a lifestyle brand. So it started with a line of home goods for Bergdorf Goodman in 2008 and really extended beyond that. So now she has partnerships with um, fabric companies, rug companies, tile, lighting, uh, wallpaper. And finally, this year, she just developed um, a color palette for Pharaoh and Ball, which is very West Coast centric and would be great for you to check it out. She has her own boutique as well um, since 2011 in LA on Melrose Place. And you can see the interiors here on the right. It's a very layered look. There's um, a lot going on, a lot to look at. I'm sure that, that shoppers stay in there for a while because there is um, a lot to touch and feel and, and see. And then finally, her most recent projects are again with her husband Corson for the proper hotels. You can see an example of that on the lower left here. Um, and they are across the country as well. There's one in Austin that is 45 stories. And then on the right, she did a project for Westfield Cent Century City Shopping Center in LA. And you can see it's really playful on the right there, not your ordinary shopping mall. It's got a mix of textiles and tiles and some, some great sitting areas. It would be definitely worth a trip if you're headed to LA. So finally, just to wrap up, her industry um, impacts have been numerous and many. In time, time in 2007, named her to the Style and Design 100. She's been named to Architectural Digest and El Decor lists multiple times, multiple years in a row. But finally this year in 2021, she was named to Architectural Digest Hall of Fame, which I think just shows her great impact on the industry. Finally, I just wanted to end with this quote from her that as students, I thought it would be great for us to keep in mind. I look at everything I do as a learning experience so I can continue evolving as a designer. There are so many different combinations in design and so many different things you, you can do. You need to keep learning and pushing yourself, keep being curious. That's what life is all about. Those are words to live by. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.